is Mondays and Mimosas. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are going to be talking about spilling the tea, mm. sex 101, dating in and out of the bedroom, dinner for two, cooking for that special someone, and always a little celebrity gossip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so see, and this is, and this is Mondays and Mimosas. So we always chatted up in the beginning of the show to see how um, each other enjoyed our weekend so how was your weekend did you do anything any fireworks or no actually i attended um the quality intimate affair and we had Ooh. a conference come in and it was a group of 15 women and she pretty much she prophesied to us you know about our lives you know things mm-hmm. that we, areas we needed to work on okay things you know that were to come in our future and it was like everything she was hitting on with me were things that applied to i like i i saw i understood what she was talking about she even like was talking about like our show and everything. That we oh did. wow! She was saying like, look out, be prepared because we have some really big things coming with with TV and everything. And so I'm like, that's, that's amazing. very she encouraging and good to and hear. I know the direction I was going with my writing and everything. That was just amazing. That is always good to hear. You know, I still hold on to um, years ago, before I got married. Somebody told me that um, I was going to be more than financially stable. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not quite understanding what that means, but through the trial and error of being a small business owner, I am slowly starting to understand um, that regardless to what that number is, God is going to always be the provider. He's going to always make sure that I am well taken care of. So um, I always keep my my faith and and hope that things will hopefully get a little bit better. You know, we all want a little bit of money, you know, buy a house or pay it off or pay off cars or get a new car, take a nice trip. So you definitely always want to have a little extra money. But in overall, you know, things are getting to a point where we're very financially um, more comfortable we've been in a long time. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm I'm glad to hear that you got that good feedback. That's really, really good. Because, you know, I'm kind of attached to that blessing. So I right. I'll, I'll take that. I will receive right. that, okay, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So. This weekend, I went kind of, um, what they say, unplugged, because mm-hmm. I um, deactivated my page for two days. Cause I just couldn't deal with the beeping and the notifications and the comments constantly. And I, so we're going to get into spilling the tea, which is part of <laughs> our today's tea a little bit. And I had to, um, so I was like, well, I'll just unfollow the person. Okay. But then I was like, why unfollow them? Why don't you just unfriend them? And then after I unfriended them, I'm like, for some reason, when I unfriend people, they either ask me why or they want to comment. And I, it's not that I'm being weak. I just, I don't feel the need to over-explain myself. So I was like, well, I'll just block them. It really wasn't that it was, like, super personal. It was just like, oh, I'll just block them. But basically, um, you know, I've never had any problems with the person. They came and did an event thing for me where they were, like, a vendor. And um, we always seem to get along well. But um, she had made a post one day, and I had made a comment to the effect of, you know, be happy you're you're single. You can send your guy home. You know, hey, when you're married, you're stuck. <laughs> Some lady came out of nowhere and was like, you sound very unhappy with your relationship. And she she wrote me like one of them all cat paragraphs that I was supposed to read. Now, mind you, this girl, though I've never had any problems with her, she posts a lot of racy things, and I find that when you are friends on Facebook with people who post a lot of, of um, very controversial stuff, and then you decide to finally make that leap and comment, and they, it's they it's always <laughs> them or somebody else on their page that's ready to have something smart to say. And I totally get that we live in a world of freedom of speech, but I don't address strangers. I don't go on Breathless page and comment on things that other people say unless I agree because my mother raised me. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. So I usually try to say something to the effect that it's not offensive. And somehow I still come off sounding like I'm being offensive. So I was like, you know what? For the simple fact that your posts really bring no edification to my life, my spirit, we're not even really friends. And I don't even want to have to explain that because I shouldn't because we're not real friends. I'm going to just go ahead and block. I just start blocking people now. 
I just started blocking people. So that is definitely what happened with that. And so I deactivated my page. I had like a Facebook migraine all weekend. I had to like lay low with shades on and lay down and stuff. And so finally, I emerged from my Facebook coma and migraine, and I went and did some shopping. And so I was on a budget this weekend because I'm, I'm trying to get ready for Vegas. I finally got everything paid for after scraping up every penny like a Girl Scout. I sold everything I possibly could, and I'm proud to say I paid for my Vegas trip and my package from Fashion and Beauty. Yay! Yay. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, what I did was, I was like, well, I got like a $20, $30 budget. Let's go out and buy some little fun stuff and see. So I went to Charlotte Roost, and I was like, I'm, I'm a clearance rack freak. I'm like, let's go to the back first, and then you work your <laughs> way to up. the front. Yeah. They had a $1.99 clearance. I'm like, oh, $1.99, yes. So I found a cute little halter top that matches the skirt that I already have here. So I'm going for Vegas. And then I went to Ulta, and Ulta had a buy one, get one half off sale on NYX Cosmetics. Oh, wow. So now if you think my lips look really cute today, it's because I'm wearing liner. Mm -hmm. It's still going on. I think it's online and in stores. Okay. And so I was telling Breathless, when your lips are fuller, it's much better to line them and then put something over them. Even if you cover the line up, it's better to start with a line foundation. Okay and then put the lipstick over it. And now I feel better. Now I feel like my lips are coming out mm -hmm. and not laying flat, mm -hmm. like, against right. my face almost, especially when you are a woman of color and you're talking lighter colors. Okay. Darker, not so bad. News, not so bad. But, like, that peachy and pink and stuff that's very loud, definitely, like, line and then put it over it because it helps kind of bring it all, bring it all in together or whatever. Yeah, like, Fifty shades of pink. Yes, I put one on top of the other until I get it to the perfect. Yeah, tone I am yeah. fifty shades of brown. I have like every shade of nude brown. Like my whole uh, lipstick collection look like the NYX lingerie collection. It's like all nude shades, tans, okay. pinks that look like nudes, nudes that look like browns, browns that look like burgundies. They're all in the same right. family. Like I, I can't get around it. I can't with the lipstick. So we are um, going to get ready to go into our next segment, which is going to be Sex 101. Ooh, so stay tuned for that. segment, which is Sex 101. And so we were having a behind-the-scenes debate because we were trying to figure out um, which perspective to go um, to discuss the topic from, married or single. So we'll try to do a little bit of both, but since we're doing the dinner for two today, we'll more so touch on um, the coupled portion. Right. So I haven't asked you, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but oh, oh <laughs> is, is, is there a man in your life? No, there's not. Oh. <laughs> but you know us Libras always keep a, a line of see. <laughs> I knew she was my Libra twin because that's something I was like, yes, yes, in my day, in my way, way back in the days. The once upon a time, not long ago, I was a, right, them days? Yeah, girl. So anybody, anybody moving up the the ladder or they just kind of all just, just running the race right now? It's a race for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I, for those who don't know me, I have been married for um, seven years, and one thing that my pro my husband probably dislikes about me, but at the same time loves that I am probably the most uh, rawest uncut person ever, and I keep it very real. And I think part of, though we have our hardships, I think part of our successes is that we keep it real and we're able to communicate with each other because denial is not a river in Egypt. So you got to be honest and and open communicate. And so when I was telling you earlier about how I went shopping, so, okay, my hair is a mess. And I, so I just took it down, and I do, like, this little, I'm in formation like Beyonce, and I let it get all curly. And I specifically told him, like, I wanted to look like, you know, I live out here in Taylor, Southgate area, majority white. I'm like, I want to look like a little white girl today. I want to look cute right. with a little, it, it little, yeah. little tennis dress, little tennis skirt on. And I'm going to do this to my hair. And so as I was getting dressed, I was figuring out which glasses I want to wear, and one of the models, True Model, um, True Bryant Model Inc., 
who is one of the models for Climax. She'll be in the show July 1st, which is Saturday. Also, we'll be promoting the book launch for Climax by Breathless. So make sure you take a, a look at that on our business page at facebook.com slash don't forget to Climax. And so um, she's going to be, um, she was modeling in the show. And so I seen a picture on her Facebook page and she had some glasses on. I'm like, oh, I miss my um, smart glasses. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find mine, right? So I'm getting dressed. I'm putting my glasses on, and mm -hmm. I'm combing my hair down. I'm like, oh, I feel real cute and smart and stuff. And <laughs> um, you know, sometimes the sexy nerd, you know, works for some of us. I like that look. Yeah, I like that look. So I put my glasses on. I'm thinking I'm cute, and I'm getting dressed. And my husband was like, Oh, them cute. When you get home, you need to keep that on later. I was like, like oh, it's a sexy school teacher. Yes, and I'm like, What is it? He was like. You look like a sexy school teacher. Mm -hmm. But when I looked in the mirror, right, and I looked at my hair and I looked at my features, I said, turned around, I said, may she rest in peace. You realize you're turned on by a 1970s version of my mother, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he just looked at me because this is what she looked like. You know, 70s, big glasses, big hair. My hair was really big and curly. Mm -hmm. If I could show you some pictures, you would die. You would be like, oh, my God, you look just like your mom. So I was like, you're weird, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, so I end up keeping the glasses on later. But, but you know, those little small things are just something that we take for granted in, you know, relationships that you can do to kind of spice it up. You know, you see those little mean people joke, oh, he wants somebody different. It got to be somebody yeah, different. Right. Different wig, right. different glasses, different lipstick color, put some lashes on. You can do a lot of different stuff. Role play. Yeah. Role play. Exactly. Exactly. Naughty stranger. Right. You know, I, I like those little masks that have, like, only only the mouth and no eyes. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> naughty, naughty stranger danger. <laughs> and so, um, speaking of the runway show for July, I don't know if you know, because you were asking me earlier about um, the people coming and gift bags and stuff like that. We have a sponsor by My Little Secret, um, and she's one of my Facebook friends on Facebook. And um, you can find her at seekerofsecrets.com. And she said that your secrets are always safe with them. I like that. I like yeah. it as well. And so I decided to support her one day. And I bought a couple of things that are good ways to kind of get back into romancing the, um, getting the relationship and the, the romance back into your relationship. So I bought like a candle and these are one of those body butter candles. Yeah, it's, it's like a good oil. It, it, it's vanilla. It smells really, you said try scent sex. Is that a website? We're going live at the same time. Message me on here and tell me what that is. We got to figure that out. And so I really like this because you can spoon it out and you can pour it on each other's skin. And so a couple weeks ago, I gave my husband a naked massage. <laughs> so now every time he want a massage, I'll be like, you won't like when them, we've been married forever. I'm going to just rub your back like, irrit, irrit, irrit massages. Or do you want like a naked massage where I'm going to wax up, wax <laughs> up? Of a body against them. I mean, you can't give somebody that and then go back <laughs> to a regular massage. Right. <laughs> and so, like, when I massage him, I like to abuse him, right? So I'll pour it on him when it's like scalding hot. Mm -hmm. And he liked that. But then he tried to do that to me. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> that don't work. No. <laughs> oh, Ooh, so we are being told that since sex is, is when you blindfold your mate and you just do what makes them moan or move. Okay, it's kind of like look, listen, and feel kind of thing. Okay. And so also we have a, a body chocolate paint kit that I had also ordered. And it comes with like. It's edible. It's edible. It comes with paint brush sticks. And it comes with like little cards that you're supposed to like draw. And you're supposed to like do certain little things. Like this one says, use your fingertips, draw any picture on your partner's buttocks. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> and then if your partner guesses what you have, stylish, wait, 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 time, take your time, enjoy this delectable pleasure. 
if your partner guesses what you have stylish d drawn on his or her butt, he or she gets the point. Oh, God. I would never figure out what the hell my husband would draw on my butt. <laughs> this one, chocolate is at its best when coating fruits with its sweetness. Feed your partner chocolate-dipped fruits as Cleopatra and Caesar would. You deserve a point just for that. You said those cards, I really love those. Yes, so um, we actually um, was feeding each other fruit one day, which is actually a delectable, healthy snack. And it's something very sexy because the smell of the fruit, um, even just fruit is very sensual. The way it feels, the way it tastes. So um, making this like a fruit bowl for you and your um, significant other or that special person and sharing that together with a little Cool Whip, then you can finish it off with a little chocolate fudge. I mean, that's that's amazing. So I really like this. This And these were only like, this was like $14.99 for the kit. Mm -hmm. Wasn't expensive at all. And um, I thought I bought some other stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we're, we're going to be doing a raffle. And I'm going to hear you so we can wrap it up before we get into our next um, segment. But we're going to be doing a raffle for Climax. And so today, you guys are special viewers, so you get to see what's going to be in the ladies' raffle for the Climax show. So um, we were donated by My Little Secret. The Screaming O, which is the discreet lipstick vibrator. Every lady needs this when she's traveling, okay? Because we're taking a trip to Vegas, and I would love to have something discreet. Again, instead of trying to ever, ever, you know, with your homegirl sharing a bed with you or whatever, this would, you know, this would definitely help out a lot. So I really like this. And um, I added some more extra little stuff to the packet, and we have a edible thong. Yes, edible thong. And it's chocolate and strawberry. So these are going to be uh, really fun. And we're going to probably put a few other little things in the bag for the raffle. So our time is getting short. You guys stay tuned. We're going to ease on into our next segment, which is dating in and out of the bedroom. Is so dating we'll be in and out of the bedroom. So I wanted Breathless here to kind of take the wheel and tell me, what is it like in the dating world now? Because I know dating is like a thing of the past. Everybody's kicking it. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard because it's like a lot of the guys out there are they, they just telling you what they think you want to hear instead of being real. And, you you know, you're approaching everybody like, just be real with me. You know, what are you looking for? Because this is what I'm looking for. And they still, like, feel like they have to, like, feed you lies and everything. And it's just like it's really annoying. Like, you go through all of the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. weren't on the same page to begin with. <clears throat> it's like, why did you waste my time? And then, like, the, like the one line, a lot of guys use, like, when you're, when you're meeting with each other and they're saying, like, you know, you, I'm like, I don't like liars. You know, be upfront with me about what you're looking for, your expectations. Oh, I love liars. I'm I not love. a liar. What, uh, what do I have to lie for? I don't have anything to prove. They always say that. But I don't like, even know you. Like, why? They still, they still lie. lie. <laughs> and I'm like, why? So that's, like, the biggest issue with me is guys pretending to be what they think I'm looking for instead of just being themselves. You know what I've learned from growing up with four brothers, and I think, which goes back to the girl I was talking about and a lot of other stuff, I grew up with four brothers, mm -hmm. so I, I was definitely told the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I hope we didn't lose it. And so, you know, basically, it probably will post what I'm thinking. Okay. Is it too long for my phone? Oh. But it's all right. We'll still have it all down on here, too, on Periscope. All right, if y'all log back in or you tune back in, sorry, my phone is kicking us out of live. So, okay, so back to you guys over here. <laughs> and so um, what I've learned from having brothers, you know, and, and male friends when I was younger, I never really got along with females, so I always had a lot of male friends, and they always kind of told me the, the, the insight to how the men think. And though I know, I know a lot of you people really hate Steve Harvey, but guess what? I don't think you understand what kind of code he broke when he wrote, you know, act like a lady, think like a man. And that's kind of how I was raised. Like, I was raised around men where I saw, you know, though they're all married and, you know, happily married or whatever or single, whatever they're doing. But I was around when my brothers would put me on the phone to break up with their girlfriends when I was a little kid or go close the door on her. Or go, you know, boys really are just the ultimate cock blockers. Hence the irony of cock blockers. They are the, 
the epitome of it because the reality of it is women can have as many relationships, as many sexual partners, as many dates, twice times over than of a man. Mm -hmm. And so by telling you you're the only one, I don't want you to see nobody else, we're being committed, he is throwing salt in your game. Mm -hmm. He is holding, you know, you back from getting into you know what I'm saying, anything further than what you're already doing. Right. So I think that, you know, men just lie because they're selfish. They're absolutely they selfish. Can't, they can't lie. That's, I'm like, I'd be, Terrible. On the, I'd be on the game before the game was even played out. And I'm, I sit, sometimes I sit back and watch. I'm like, I wonder how far they're going to take Have it. you found that people tend to not like you at times because, like myself, I'm so – freaking intuitive and observant that they be like, <laughs> you ain't right. You ain't. Yeah. 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 Like I'm sitting <laughs> there and I'm like, you're watching it happen. Yeah. You're just like, okay, let's see how long you're going to keep yeah, spinning like, the wheel. I, I'm really interested. Like, I wonder how much mm. you continue to lie after I told you I know you're lying and you, I'm trying to convince yeah. you you're not lying. I'm like, oh, okay. And keep lying anyway. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's so irritating, but <laughs> I be hip to the game, too. You be seeing these guys, well, well, I'm married, too. Well, we don't need to be two married people <laughs> cheating together. <laughs> like, no, that don't, make, that don't make any sense at all. So my question of today is, what happened to real dating? Is it, is it, is it even possible? I mean, I, I know people do date, but we, we've gotten to a point with um, human interaction and social media that, you know, we don't date anymore. We actually um, date more, so to speak, on social media. We have more interactions and conversations. I and think it's also like a lot of people are so into that. I don't, you know, I don't have feelings or F your feelings or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't need love and all of that. It's like mm -hmm. they're so used to being in that mode because they're so used to being, you know, heartbroken. So it's like everybody has that train of thought. So it's like everybody's out here pretending like they're not looking for something when they really are looking for something. But it's like, Mm -hmm. You know, because if nobody's looking for anything, everybody's just out here just doing whatever. And it's making it harder for people to be savage. Really yeah. yeah, it does make it really hard. See, when um, my husband and I first started dating, um, I don't know if you're kind of like me. When I date, if I was a man, I'd love me because I'm hot. Um, I'm fun. Mm -hmm. I can hold my own conversation by myself as you can see. I mean, I just talk, you know, so I'm like a blast in the glass. So I was basically dating myself, so to speak, which I always joke with them like I was dating myself. You didn't know work. You just showed up and looked cute. But <laughs> we we had fun dates and I always surprised them with little like the sex stuff we had. We always had the little toys or we always used to make mixed drinks mm -hmm. and We'd spend the night out in a nice hotel room all weekend, or we'd go to the movies. We'd almost practically, we got to a point we were living together. We would go get a room every weekend and spend the whole weekend together and then go out to eat. And, and it'd be like our little house, our little space. Took the time we were like in our 20, 21 and 22, and I was living out with my parents and stuff. So we were enjoying our little quiet time together. But we, Dave and Busters, I mean, and that was just we were younger. If we were being dating now, oh, my God, I'd be like, baby, we going to Bahama. All right. Take me to the Caribbean, you know what I'm saying? We would really be having some lavish, very fun dates. I'm like, and we we do now, you know, because we celebrate our anniversary in Vegas. But, okay. you know, we have fun dating, and people just don't date. Like, my friend was telling me, like, she's really enjoying this new guy she's dating because he's a Libra. And I said, oh, yeah, you got a good one, girl. He is going to court the hell out of you, and everything he's going to do. Are you a perfectionist just a little bit? I get because because I was reading. My friend was telling me about my zodiac, and she was telling me like Libra's um Libra. Basically, it was like Libra. You're you're pretty much you're awesome, mm -hmm. and everybody else sucks, and, and and they're a little slow. They don't know how to keep up with you, so you just gotta you know learn how to deal with people, and they're a little slow. And I was like, uh, you know what? Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Sounds sounds very Libra esque. You know, we're not perfect, but. We're, we're so open to being right, to being wrong, to agreeing to disagreeing, right. you know, taking that ill occasionally, mm -hmm. you know. Very, we're very open to that. So I, I consider myself a good catch and a nice person. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you should. Yeah. Because yeah, right. some people are crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have, so what's the craziest experience you've ever had?
Something PG thirteen. Well, I'll I'll tell part of a story because it's way worse than that. But when I was single, I was dating this guy, and he was like Mr. Popular back in middle school. So I was just like, oh, he's so cute. I finally got me some such and such. Yeah, let me go out with him. Right, he came and picked me up from my house, and um, we went out to eat because we were supposed to be going to get something to eat, and we get to the restaurant. And we go up to the bar. I'm like, well, it's getting kind of late. I don't know. Do you want to eat at the bar? Do you want to get some takeout? But I'm definitely like, I want some cheese sticks. We had like Applebee's or something. Okay. And um, he like, nah, I ain't really hungry. Why the hell we at Applebee's? Oh, wow. If you ain't really hungry. Mind you, we did all this in a snowstorm. <laughs> nah, I ain't really hungry. I, uh, I made some spaghetti at the crib. You, gonna, you can come back and eat some of that if you want. So you think I did all of this to go eat spaghetti? And it ain't like it's my spaghetti where it's like pepperoni, <laughs> olives, green peppers, a little sugar, you know what I'm saying, some fresh tomatoes, uh, Parmesan shredded cheese, not just the grated cheese. No, nah, just like some noodles and water type stuff. And, you know, yeah, so just, just to say that was all a ploy just to get me back to his house. And that was an epic fail beyond his wildest measures. So, yeah. Seeing him on people you may know and block. <laughs> Team Patty. So, you guys stay tuned. Um, we're going to our next break, and we're going to get ready to go into um, our last segment, which is going to be some celebrity gossip. Okay. <laughs> stay tuned. For our celebrity gossip this week, we're talking about Jennifer Lopez and Alex Rodriguez. Following her split from Jake, Jennifer moved on to former MLB star in March. She seems really excited in quotations, Mark, according to friends and family. He has been around her family and she really likes that he is a dad. She is aware, though, that he is a ladies man, too, and is being very cautious. For now, it's just fun. A source previously told people both stars have kids from previous relationships. Jennifer shares twins Max and Emma with ex-husband Mark Jacobs. And Alex is a dad to his daughters Natasha and Ella with ex-wife Cynthia. Cynthia Skirtus. Um, We've seen Jennifer also on Rachel Ray, so as we know that she likes to cook, and we're going to be talking about does she like to cook for her new man on Dates at Home. So stay when tuned. he was doing his show, and um, he's kind of another one. I think light-skinned guys just kind of get a bad rap, though. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Like, for example, I, I feel like I'd have more fun with Rick Ross than Drake, though. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, and we're not talking in the bedroom. We just mean just like dates, personality, just, you know, I don't know. It's something commanding about a dark-skinned man. It is. It's just a Idris, a Idris Alba. Ooh, a brother with an accent, girl. Mm. You know what, though? Mm. I've been kind of done with uh, Idris Alba. Like, Kate Michelle, because I, I feel like I'm so untouchable. And then after he dated her, I felt like he could date anybody. Oh! Uh. You know, I, yeah, you you would think a brother with an accent would be looking for like a a um a Holly Berry or a um um supermodel, beauty model, Vanessa Williams, shit, a Nia Long, a a, a Taraji. Yeah, so. Back to J Lo, oh, yeah. she has <laughs> actually been on. Um, I saw that she's been on Rachel Ray, which does a lot of cooking on her show. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a picture of J Lo with her cooking, um, like an authentic Puerto Rican dish, mm-hmm. um, similar to her um, heritage and nationality. And I wonder, does she cook for her new man? You know, by them both being um, divorced already, okay. so they're they're. This is not their. Second or third, probably the fourth or fifth walk around the park, allegedly. Okay. But, like, you know, this is, like, their third or fourth, you know, trip around this go. They have children. Mm-hmm. So I would think they take a lot of, like, quiet dates and a lot of, um, you know, dates at home where they cook nice dinners. She probably rub his back and, you know, they have a nice meal, nice steak, a lot of steak.
mm. saying like we shouldn't cook for the men we're dating. What do you think about that? I think that is a fine line, mm -hmm. but food is a way to a man's heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that as long as you're cooking for him in your house and he goes home that night <laughs> versus he has a whole sock drawer in your room and okay. you cook for him, mm -hmm. you're not setting the whole I'm your wife. It's just I'm being frugal mm -hmm. and I'm showing you that I love you mm -hmm. and making you a lovely meal mm -hmm. versus I'm making dinner for the family. Yeah. Like, oh God, I'm gonna cook something. We can have some drinks and relax. I'm like, you think maybe go home? Like, yeah. We're not trying to. Cause we're in the world of Netflix and chill now. Right. So you know, a nice, good home cooked meal mm -hmm. um, is definitely not a problem at all. I think that it just depends on how you do it, mm -hmm. and as long as you're not living together, mm -hmm. I think that's really what separates it from lovely meal versus lovely trying to be wife. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that draws the line. Okay. So. You know, I wonder um, what other couples have, like, home dates. I wonder if some of these younger teenage couples who are rich and famous in the celebrity world, do they do dates where they cook at home, or do they go out? Like, do some of these girls even learn the trade of cooking? I think that's a lost art. You don't have to be the best cook, but everybody knows 15 chicken, frozen or unfrozen, takes 15 minutes on each side, you know, uh, uh, most stuff need to be set at 400 for 40 minutes in the oven. I, I mean, it just, you know, you, you sprinkle a little flour and you grease to make sure it's hot enough. You know, some of that stuff is just, but I, I guess the, the art of the, the real lady and the real man and real dating and just some of these traditional values that we've been taught by our parents out have the out the window. And I like to cook because I love, I love to eat. So mm -hmm. I love to eat, too. I'm a foodie. Are you a foodie? Yeah. <laughs> you need to go to New York, then. New York, to me, is like the one place you can go that you can eat every five seconds, mm -hmm. especially in Times Square, mm -hmm. late at night when they got all the trucks going. Oh, my, oh my God. Yeah. You can get any and everything. Like, I never seem to have the right appetite when I go down there, and I'm always so mad. Like, I just want to be hungry. I know. I've never <laughs> went there and just indulged on Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think I'm, when I go back in September, I think my very last day, I'm going to go. I'm going to overindulge yeah. and just eat so <laughs> good. That yeah. gelato, all of that stuff, the pizza. I got to go back to Brooklyn for the 99 cent slices, the little tacos. Like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm starving. And we're going to start moving soon into our dinner for two segment to show you an easy recipe that you can make. Um, even if you're not the best chef, you're not the best cook. We're going to show you a very, very easy recipe that doesn't require any um, instructions, and you'll make a lovely meal for you and your significant other. So stay tuned, and we're about to get ready to ease into that segment. <laughs> And we are now getting ready to get into our cooking segment. So it is a two-part segment, and today we're going to be doing our signature mimosa of the day which is going to be made with blueberry lemonade and champagne. And we're also going to be doing that dinner for two that we're going to be talking about um, for couples who want a quick meal, who don't do a lot of cooking, and something that's going to go really good with the mimosas. So today, um, Breathless has been awesome as usual mm -hmm. and came and got us really nice glasses. <laughs> And they're all, and actually they're blue, so they go with the blueberry lemonade. I didn't even realize that. I know, right? So we got the glasses, we got our lemonade. We're gonna be doing minimate lemonade, and then we have our champagne, and then we have already pre-cut um, some fruits to go in our mimosas. So. Did you watch that video? I think we tagged each other in it with the mimosas and I watched, stuff. Yes. That looked really good. Yes. So what we're going to do is we got some sugar in this um, styrofoam plate right here. And we're just going to take our glasses and we're going to dip them into the sugar so we can try to get some on the edges. Because <laughs> I didn't get that lemon zest stuff. I didn't get a chance to. <laughs> so probably got to wet them some more. Let's see. Still one of these. Oh, yeah. 
So we're trying to coat that edge so we can get some sugar on our glasses. This is going to be mm, so I know. good. Oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's pretty. That is. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yay. Talk about lemon's ass. Why she just didn't say lemon? Get a lemon. It's trying to sound all fancy. Talk about lemon. We could have, I mean, we could have zested it ourselves. Exactly. I was thinking yeah. that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so now we are going to put our champagne in. And you know, it's like three parts champagne, one part lemonade. Yes. So you know with champagne, you got to pour it slow because you might, it's worse than pop. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm trying to level it out a little and be good, <laughs> but I'm, you know, OG party girl. I really prefer more, <laughs> more, right, <laughs> more, 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 more. <laughs> Just more bit. Okay, okay, <laughs> sure. Right. I won't feel too bad. It right. <laughs> yeah, it's four o'clock somewhere. Right. Okay, I was going to say it's a little bit. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and put, ooh, oh, that makes it look really pretty. Mm -hmm. Why can't I wait to drink this? I was thinking about this all day. Like, like I've never had wait. the blueberry mimosa. This is good. I'm this one is. Like and so we got some strawberries. Ooh. Did you cut this one? Yeah, I sliced this. Not this one. I, I you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thought I did. I'm like, it looks like can't. Okay, wait a minute. You, I think you just can't see it. <laughs> I, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know I did. <laughs> okay, so, ooh, that go really good with that. Yes, baby. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and put a lemon down in there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Toast that up. <laughs> yes, and wait, we got to get pictures of this before we enjoy. Wait, a little sip though. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so we will be back to get to our next portion of our cooking segment. Thank you for tuning in. So, welcome back. We are getting ready to do our cooking segment of Mondays and Mimosas. We were talking about um, dinner for two, and right now I am heating up my cast iron skillet. So today, um, I call them breakfast steaks. Mm -hmm. Breakfast steaks, but they're basically iron round, um, iron round steaks. And these are like very small steaks. They're probably not bigger than about, I don't know, maybe about four ounces. Okay. And so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook these today, and we're gonna cook them at about medium to, I say. Um, I like mine's like yeah, medium to medium rare, only because oh, medium rare. Yes. Now, oh. now, normally, okay. okay. <laughs> so normally, I do like my steaks um, medium well mm -hmm. or medium. But when you're dealing with a steak this small, mm -hmm. um, and it's maybe only about maybe uh, like I said, three ounces, four, if four if you're lucky. You don't want to cook it the same way you would cook um, a bigger steak. Mm -hmm. So I'm cooking my heat. If you have an electric stove, I'm between about four and medium. And so I'm just going to rinse to come over here and rinse my steak off real quick because I have a heart attack. Now. I, she didn't rinse her rinse steak. Me, rinse her meat. <laughs> she didn't rinse her uh, uh, uh. So I might as well just go ahead and cook it now. And so we're just going to go ahead. Add that in. And again, we're keeping it like really, 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 really simple. So this is for like the simplest person. So step one, grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> step two, rinse meat. Start start you a cast iron skillet, preferably because those always give you those beautiful steak lines. The cast iron. Get your meat. Go ahead and put it in. Go ahead and um, hello everybody. You can go ahead and add 
this season is. So I'm gonna put a little bit of accent because accents make everything taste good. Just a little sprinkle. And I put some butter down in the skillet because I am out of olive oil. But to me, when you're doing a steak, even if you're trying to be healthy, butter is better. Oh, butter, yeah, it always gives it the salt. Yeah. So I'm gonna do some black pepper. You cannot have a steak without a little black pepper. <laughs> the more, the merrier, the least. And then we're gonna do a little. Have you ever tried the, the, the salt grill mate seasoning? Yes. Oh, my husband good. used those. I put them on my menu when I don't put them on the grill because I just like the smell. The taste, yeah. yes, those are so good. And so what we're gonna do? We got it on there, so now we're gonna cook them at about. I want to say maybe three minutes on each side. So. And that might be one too, one too many, but we're going to say three. And so now I'm going to add some mushrooms. These are, um, I think, uh, I don't know they're baby bella. They were on sale at Myers. They were on a 10% sale, but I think they're just the regular um, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So we're going to rinse these all because mushrooms be kind of dirty. I don't understand why I'm going to be taking these around, but you know. Right. <laughs> and I never eat the little stemmy parts, so I always oh. pop those out. It's like a waste of but I don't eat the Not stem parts yeah. either. And so I'm just going to cut. I'm not even doing it fancy on my cutting board. I'm just cutting some uh, some extra mushrooms down in here. Because I love me some mushrooms with my steak. cooking even if you're not trying to be healthy or you just want a little something extra to your meal mm -hmm. you know adding a lot of fresh vegetables fresh yeah. fruit um, I like peppers really and onions do. with my salad yes yes um if I was doing it a little different I would do mushrooms and then my onions mm -hmm. and I had the onions in my hand I actually put them back so I was like well <laughs> I won't do you the onions today because I guess I got the potato and I got a whole bunch of stuff going on with that so mm -hmm. I don't know. You know how we be. Some stuff be about serious symmetry, I believe. Or I don't know. We be having our, our little moment. Mm -hmm. So we going to, you know what? And I just got a little garlic. Oh, yeah. Now that we put our uh, mushrooms and stuff in there. And so I was debating with my husband one day. He was like, oh. You, uh, what did he tell me? He was like, you can't put garlic on everything, or you can't right. put too much extra garlic. Or something. I was like, boy, you can put, look. Garlic go on everything. On everything. <laughs> when I used to work for my guys, I swear to God, she'd be like, don't be afraid. Uh, Lay that pepper. garlic yes. on. The garlic powder go on everything. I don't even eat some foods. Like, if I don't have pepper and garlic on it, I don't So in the meantime, while we letting our steak go another, I say two minutes, we have our beautiful plate, <laughs> and we are going to go ahead and pull out our baked potato that we pre-cooked earlier, okay. that we pre-cooked, and so what I do with my little knife, oh, little knife. Okay. and so we're just going to make a quick small incision right there. And then for some reason, my husband know how to do it perfectly where you just, like, bust them out just like that. I can never get mine like that. Mine, yeah. If you can see where it's, like. That came out good. There you go. I know he always do it real good, but. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get it down. And y'all don't mind me. I like I like all the cholesterol that I can get <laughs> in my baked potato. But on everything. On everything. <laughs> you can't go wrong. 
wish I had one of them little spoon things, like how they do it with Red Lobster, uh-huh. and they just spoon it in real quick. Uh-huh. I love it. <laughs> and so, we can go ahead and put a little butter in there. And so, we're going to crack a little pepper. Smell like Benny Hines in here now. Nah. some salt in my hand and not on my potato because Lord knows if they get up in that potato and it's too much it's stuck. It's over. So <laughs> I, I got enough. I just want to make sure. So I wasn't really trying to even really be fancy. You actually <laughs> with certain foods you need to see that salt before it go on it. Alright, we're going to go ahead and flip those steaks over. And so and so the other day I went to um where I was the Myers where Myers they had the Save a Lot yeah I when I found it the Save a Lot it was ninety nine cent and it was a Velveeta jalapeno cheese sauce <laughs> <laughs> it is real good so um I'm like okay I'm gonna try this so this is your first time trying it or you this already is, this is okay. this is my first time trying okay. this. Um, let me grab my spoon and cut some of this mic so I can splatter everywhere. I wish y'all could see this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I wouldn't say I'm the best cook, but I think I do pretty good with a budget. So, these steaks, <laughs> oh, also before I forget, let's go ahead and season that other side. So, we got our potato, we got our steaks going, and, um, make sure we saute in these mushrooms in here with them. And so, okay, so I was getting ready to put my potato, and then over here, while we've been talking, I've been, um, steaming the rest of this broccoli. And so it was already cooked and already pre-done. And we're just going to take some of the broccoli and just put it down right on top. It ain't got to be fancy, even though I try to make stuff look a certain way. <laughs> but actually, it can be cute. You can put a little one fall on each corner. Right. Kind of thing. Presentation. Presentation. <laughs> and so we were talking about cooking and cooking with a new man. And I mean, like I said, as long as you're doing it in a non-relationship setting where they're coming over to have like a dinner with you, that's better versus, you know what I'm saying, versus uh, you live with them and you're spending all this money, you know, um, on a man man who's not trying to commit to you. Who's not trying to commit. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't know how she was going to be. I had to find a bag (laughs) for it. So I put everything on there. It's not pretty yet. I'm going to pop it back in the microwave and see if that's going to melt. In the meantime, we're going to turn our steaks down because those are pretty much done. Find a bag to put the rest of this uh, cheese in. For those that don't watch, you go to mimosas. I know you can see one. The mimosa of the day was a blueberry m- mimosa if you missed it. Yes. Blueberry lemonade. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting the lemonade part. Hopefully I don't drop this when I fall. So we're cleaning up all our seasonings. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys saw it over here. Ooh, a 
will be posting pictures. And so, um, I'm gonna say the big piece for my husband, but I'll take this one right here. And if anybody does try this recipe, take a picture and post it so we can see it. Post it in the comments so we can see it. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let me get another plate so I can put the rest of the excess food away. <laughs> Putting the excess for later because I figured why not cook for me and my husband now so he can have a little something to eat when he gets right. home. So, now that we're done, go Facebook Live. So, now here we have our little meal. <laughs> it's like a little steak, and we'll take pictures. And uh, a little uh, baked potato with jalapeno cheddar cheese. With jalapeno cheddar cheese and broccoli. And as you can see, we did this. This whole segment was 14 minutes. So in less than 15 minutes, you can make a lovely dinner for two on a beautiful plate for you and your significant other. So thank you so much for tuning in for our Mondays and Mimosas. We will post everything in the description that was used and anything that was talked about today. So stay tuned. Peace. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.